now, right? So there's a, there's a thread of themes that run through last couple of songs. Kings and Queens, obviously. Um, I read an interview you did with, maybe it was Cosmo, and it said it's about Queens taking back your power. Yeah. And my question is, is that, is that based off personal experience or is that kind of like a broader state of the world thing? Um, it's both. I think personal experience for sure. I've been through some crazy things. Um, and, you know, um, for everyone in the world, I think people should definitely take back their throne, even guys. <laughs> Can can you can you allude to what the kind of things are that you're referencing? Well, you know, I I grew up like wanting to you know make it as a singer, and when I was like eight years old, so I tried doing this for over like fifteen, twenty years, and like it was tough. Like no one wanted to help me. Like it was just a lot of games. It was like, oh, you're a girl. It doesn't matter. They just want to you know to just date. Like producers wanted to date me instead of wanting to work with me. Like when I was like. 15, 16 years old, I was like a kid. And so it was really tough for me to like cope with all that because I wanted just to make music. And, <laughs> you know, so it was just, it was hard being a woman in the industry growing up. That's funny you say that because there's an Irish songwriter. She's an artist now herself. Her name is Ruth Ann Cunningham. She wrote yeah. Slow Hands with Niall Horan and she wrote uh, Scared to be Lonely, BB Rex and Martin Garrix and stuff. Oh, wow. I did a podcast with her about exactly this, about getting in with people she's excited to get in the room with, and they just, they hit on her. And it's... It, it's a weird thing, you know, and especially back in the day, it was worse. Now I feel like it's better, or maybe, I don't know, maybe it's different for me now, but before it was so weird. I mean, I thought it, back in like 2012, like 2011, like I just had... Those were not my years. <laughs> like, it was just, like, tough to even get a song back from people, you know? And, and you, um, as, as, a, as you're, like, that 15-, 16-year-old girl and that kind of stuff is happening and maybe, maybe no one does anything that's illegal but you're feeling uncomfortable, do you have the wherewithal to go, hey, I don't like this, or is it, are you overwhelmed by the situation? Like, how does it stop or conclude, I guess? Yeah, I mean, things I can't really get into. Um, I definitely maybe will in the future. But, you know, sure. I've had some traumatic experiences. And I, I think that, like, I think that's made me kind of angry, too, about, like, how it works, like, the music industry and why it works this way. Um, there definitely should be some set of rules, you know? It can't be, it, it shouldn't be, like, it, a girl shouldn't have to go through this, you know? That's about women taking back their power. So am I is kind of like about being on the outside, but being okay with that. Is that a fair synopsis? Yeah, definitely. Like feeling like growing up, you have to be in this format and you just break out of the format basically. <laughs> so yeah. And is that like, I guess I, I, I kind of find cases like, and I, I don't want to, I'm kind of clumsily tripping my way through this idea, but I kind of look at you and I go, you're obviously talented. You're beautiful you don't seem like an outsider, but that's, I guess, interesting as itself because you felt like that. Thank you. Um, I definitely did feel like that. <laughs> Growing up, I, I was just the outsider because I was Albanian and I, was, I lived in South Carolina I, uh, for two years. I came to California when I was 14 with my mom. I had no friends. So I basically like was kind of like, I had joked with my mom, I felt like a hitchhiker, like going to different states like every two years. And then we came back to California, went back east. It was like, and then I had to re, like re, I guess, learn how to make friends in a, in a new state every time. So it was just like, I didn't have any like one person, you know, any best friend or girlfriend that I would always hang with. So it was very hard to be alone in my teenage years. <laughs> We'll come back to the music now in a sec. When you look at how like polarized America is right now in terms of you're red or you're blue, you're Republican, you're Democrat, whatever, and just the rhetoric is so nasty, and particularly around immigration and all these things. Do your parents like love? Are do they are they like? Well, this is the American dream. We showed up, and our girl didn't even speak English, and we've made a life. Like, do they do they love it for that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They. My dad is all about that. I mean, my dad will sit down with anyone that comes in the door and is like a guru. He's like he's like this guy full of wisdom, and he's been through it all. And he's like, you know, you know, this is where I came. I sacrificed everything, and so he's he always talks about the American dream. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay. This, well, it's, I, I'm, like, I'm glad that it still exists and people, you know, because that message seems to have been really diluted the last four it years. It definitely still exists. I think it still exists. I try, I'm very optimistic as a person. My dad, every time I speak to him, he tries to stay optimistic, especially because sometimes I wake up and I'm just depressed because of the state of the world. Like, it's just, it's depressing. The news, especially here in America, is very depressing. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, definitely my dad tries and keeps me optimistic. <laughs> Now, you're right. This is, look, it is what it is. You're a victim of circumstance and you've answered all these questions before, but we got to do the, the quarantine checklist question. Let's do it. Okay, you're, you're on autopilot from here on in. What TV shows are you watching right now? Little Fires Everywhere and Dead to Me. I've never heard of either of those. What are they? Oh my God, so good. Little Fires Everywhere with Reese Witherspoon and Kerry Washington. And it's like a small town drama. And then uh, I like those dramas because I have no drama in my life. <laughs> and then <laughs> Dead to Me, another small town drama uh, with Christina Applegate. Give me all the small town dramas. These aren't so much quarantine questions or internet. These are just general questions. I'm going to fire at you. <laughs> I developed in later life an appreciation for you too. Only the last couple of years I've started to listen to the music and love them. Who have you discovered a little bit later in life that you now love? Oh my gosh, this is a tough question because I grew up with a lot of music. Ah, uh, or who's one of the old classics, the, the classic icons or divas that you love? Oh, I love Madonna. I love Madonna. I love Madonna. I was just like reading about Madonna. I don't know. Like, I just, I love Madonna. <laughs> Have you ever met? Um, I think for me, if I meet her, I'll probably fall and die. So I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> I'd be like, queen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ellen DeGeneres is sick. They call up you. They're like, Ava, we need you to step in. Quick, smart. You step in. Who are your three dream guests? You can have anybody in the world. Oh, Jennifer Lawrence. Um, Adam Sandler. I think he's so funny. And I want to ask him all, his, all these questions. And then, um, who else? Um, ah! Uh, this is a tough one. Mariah Carey. <laughs> yes. yes. Random. So I went to, there's this famous dance college in New York called Broadway Dance Center. And I went there when I was in my 20s. And one of my mentors was this guy, Brian Tanaka, who went on to become Beyonce's dance captain. And he was also Mariah Carey's dance captain. And then they fell in love and now they're going out. Oh, yeah, they're dating. Oh, yeah. my God, that's crazy. Sorry that you can't be traveling the world. We'd love to see you, but come again soon. We'll see you in 2027. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you too.